now in order, comes to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilwoman Miller, would you lead us? Sure. I pledge, pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the uh, council meeting minutes for August the 28th, did everybody have a chance to look at those? Are there any uh, corrections or additions? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve by uh, Goodman. Second. Is there a second by Fitzwater? Those in favor, signify by raising your right hand and it's unanimous? Okay. <laughs> raised his left hand, but we'll take that in again. <laughs> okay, uh, Board of Public Works and Safety minutes for uh, August uh, the 2nd, the 16th, and the 30th were for information uh, only. Um, we don't have anything under communications, so we'll go right on down to the public uh, hearing. I will open the public hearing referencing condemnation of property located at 1430 Monroe Street and I would ask Casey to step up <coughs> hello hello good hello. evening <laughs> do you identify yourself for the record please my name is Casey Coles, and I am the executive director of the Fulton County Planning Commission, enforcing the city's unsafe building ordinance. And you wanted to start with 1430 Monroe. Yes, sir. Correct. Uh, 1430 Monroe, we actually have originally dealt with this house back in 2014. It burnt. Uh, there was a fire, and we sent out just a simple scrap and debris violation letter and, and requested that the owner clean it up. It went from there to an unsafe order for the original owner. Um, in the meantime, it switched to owners. So we had to amend the order to the new owner. And that occurred in October, to October 27th, 2015. We actually had another condemnation or the unsafe hearing on the unsafe order. And the new owner was actually there. And so the council at that time allowed him he wanted to refab the house. So the council allowed him at that time to get a permit and to go ahead and remodel the home, which he did. He came in the next day. He did receive the remodel permit. Some of the preliminary work was completed. The most important thing on these is normally to get it buttoned up, replace the windows, replace the doors, make sure that it's buttoned up and sealed from the weather. So uh, they got the windows in at the door and started replacing the roof. And then they stopped. And at this point, the pictures that you received that I gave to you in front, that are in front of you, those would be current photos. And honestly, we did notify the owner again uh, with a 10 day notice, which is typical. That's our standard procedure. We give them a 10 day notice, ask them to tell us what their intent is. We never received uh, that notice back and we never received any uh, comments from the owner. So then we sent. Excuse me, Casey. Just one question: When you send out a notice like that, is it certified signature, re receipt, returned? The ten day is just first class, but then when we don't receive any notice, we send out the actual order, certified. Okay. We require a signature, which you'll see that in your packet. The whole envelope was returned to us. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. I know, but mm -hmm. So it you get it wasn't signed for. It. No. What are the chances these people aren't even around anymore? It's a good possibility. Now, we never received the first class one back. Typically, we'll find that returned. If, in this case, it's a P.O. box. If the P.O. box has been assigned to someone else, you know, they moved. and um, But we never received it back. So it's a good possibility he is not around. In this particular case, I know that my inspectors, when they went in to do the inspections, um, they said there was still a very strong odor of the creosote from the fire and they had gutted it and had started to replace lumber but um, 
they just said that it was unbelievable the smell of the fire that was in the house that ripped through it. You can see from the photos that I gave you, I mean, the roof, however it was repaired, you can see that there's a corner that is already um, open to the elements. We have a soffit that's open to the elements. We have shingles that are pulling off. The electrical service, even though they did receive the permit and went in and conducted some rewiring work, the meter was never placed back on the home. If it was, it, it was taken off because the meter is no longer there. So it has not had electricity for quite some time and has been abandoned as far as I know since then. They've never finished it. So at this point, our hands are kind of tied. I really don't have any other recourse but to ask for an unsafe affirmation on it um, as an abandoned home, you know, that's not being corrected. I was not uh, here for the 2015 meeting. Some of you were. John, do you remember the posture at that time? Was it? Uh, yeah, it, it, we did grant them some time to um, work on the home and to get it properly. It was like six months at a time, and then they would come back to the council and say how much progress is going on. And, and there was a, some was done, and then it was the disappearing act again. And I know that that was it, and I can see that the building is, is as bad as it was in 15 for sure. I don't know if any of you have seen it firsthand. I looked at it when we had a project over on Monroe Street, and it is they put some money into it, but it's bad, and, and, and it, it is in very, very close proximity to two neighbors that exactly. are probably having fits. Um, I'm surprised you haven't heard from them. I am too. I just happen to see it because of the sidewalk project, coincidentally. What is our next step, Casey, as far as to get control of possession, what we can do with the home as far as to make it either go away or? The way the process works is if uh, the council affirms the order, the unsafe order, then uh, the city attorney takes it to a judge. And um, I believe that typically they try their own notification of the owner, send out some notice to them uh, through that court proceedings. But then, you know, Andy would take it to the judge and ask for his signature, uh, his blessing on the order. And then normally what I do is I send out a notice to, I have a list of five or six contractors, ask them for estimates, and then I go ahead and I ask them to take it down. And I have a list of requirements I make them follow as far as responsible um, demolition. but then it would be a lien. Shada then would put a lien on the property so that when the lot was sold, uh, the lien would be paid back to the city. But as far as the city uh, receiving the property in their name, that's not part of this process. Mm -hmm. The property stays in this current owner's name. It's just an unsafe order that a lien is put on there for the work it's and the for the attorney unsafe fees. Unsafe structure. Unsafe yeah. structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions from the side of the dais, uh, comments? If not, I'd open it up to the public. Any, uh, comments or questions in public hearing from the relative to the property? Have they been paying the property tax on? You know, I didn't check. 2015, mm -hmm. definitely in the rear one now. Well, just because they abandoned the house doesn't mean they didn't pay the taxes on it. But I didn't check, to be honest with you. Mm. And I can. Normally, I'll check that before Andy takes it through. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the public? Okay. Then I will uh, close. Pardon. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Should we make a motion to proceed? Well, we have to close the public hearing first. Mm -hmm. Either, way. I, I, Either I think, way. I think you could vote during the public, public hearing. Public hearing. Okay. You okay. Vote public hearing. Uh, comments and suggestions from the council. Any, any activity? I just suggest that the department and building inspector move forward. 
<coughs> okay, it's been uh, been mentioned that uh, we move to move forward with the condemnation process. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Moved by Miller and seconded by Garrett. We move forward. Uh, those in favor signify by raising your right hand. It's unanimous. Okay. Instead of closing the public hearing, I'll just move on to the next item for public hearing, keep it open, and uh, talk about the condemnation of property located at 730 Indiana Avenue. This particular property at 730 Indiana Avenue also experienced a fire. It was a pole barn structure uh, full of personal items, cold storage, and uh, there was no electricity to the building. The building burnt, and believe we're probably going into 90 or 120 days again the process the procedure for the office is we typically give an owner you know at least 30 days 60 days to try to get everything wrapped up with their insurance company if there is insurance in this particular case there was not um, we send another 10-day notice on August 9th which I believe was I, I think that was already three months after the fire it was quite a while we gave the owner um, quite a bit of time to get a contractor in to pull the metal out because that's basically all that's left is just metal and a few debris items but um, the owner did call us say that she had contacted somebody to mow the grass and to remove the metal and so um, we asked her how long and I believe we gave her another month after that and when uh, nothing proceeded on um, August 28th so we created the actual order that said it's an unsafe order but it also it goes to the fact that it's an impaired structural there's several some beams that are standing it was a hazard to public health public nuisance and it's a danger if anyone goes on there there's quite a bit of um, like I said metal and debris still there so we just asked for the trash to be removed and to remove that part of the unsafe building still standing which is just two or three poles um, in this case, I know that the mayor's office was contacted a couple times, I believe, by the owner. My office was contacted a couple times, and um, the owner kept saying that she was looking for someone to remove the metal and um, to mow it. And last week, the clerk's, the clerk treasurer's office received a phone call from the owner, message to tell my office that there was somebody who was going to mow it and remove the metal um, that day. This was Friday. They called Chris. I was going to say they probably called the front office. Mm -hmm. And um, I went by this morning, and it had been mowed, the outskirts, mm -hmm. but the metal was still there. So, and of course the hearing was already set, which I did tell the owner that the last time I spoke to her, you know, it's set. And if you have everything cleaned up, I'll be happy to walk into the council and tell them everything's taken care of and no, no issues. Yeah, I, I too went and took a look today because there has been some activity. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't look like any large activity, though. It's still no. got a lot of the stuff, the unsafe looking stuff. Mm -hmm. Anybody else had an opportunity to take a look at it? Oh, I've been by it several times. <coughs> Thoughts? Proceed forward. Anybody on this side? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel like there's been, when you feel like she's actually trying? I mean, I, I've had to deal with, you know, trying to get contractors in the last few months here and in Indy, mm -hmm. and I know it's hard. You know, people mm -hmm. are working. I had two people call my office and ask who owned it because they wanted to go get the metal. And I believe the mayor also had yeah, spoke one to contact. And did those people go get the metal? Nobody's gotten any metal that I know of. I, I believe Can't the metal permission to yeah. and, and she has somebody because didn't they come to the police station and say let us let us know at the police department? She called the police department just to let us know if somebody was supposed to be there removing the metal and metal. Not knowing but was that last week? Yeah. Last. May I? I, was, I walked sure. by there at lunchtime. Very loving right just to metal products. Mm. They were, people were there moving, removing metal Friday. Oh, great. When I walked by at lunchtime. Okay. Not a lot. I mean, they were taking it out from 
but he's still going on the trailer. Okay. It's just a depend. I mean, they, you can't tell it now, but okay. it physically sees something. Well, great. So there has been a small progress. Is that enough progress to keep the issue open for uh, that's 30 days? I would say that's up to you. If you want to table it for 30 days, I'll be happy to come back and tell you. I mean, if there is somebody... My fear is typically in this situation what happens is they go in and they get the metal and anything valuable, but all the debris mm -hmm. stays. It's going to be there. But between now and then, is that going to hurt anything? Uh, you know, hopefully no one goes on and leads up a post, but... Any thoughts? It's, you know, it's going to be snowing pretty soon and it's still going to be, the metal will be removed, the debris will still be standing, mm -hmm. the rubbish will still be there. Health and safety should be first concern. I would suggest moving forward. Is anyone here representing uh, property owner at 730 Indiana Avenue? Anyone present? No. Any any other comments? Thank you, Greg, for your comment. Any other comments from the public? I will just say we've been trying to buy the property. The owner hasn't returned my calls. Someone in my organization has spoken with her, but we're not getting very far with that person. Mm -hmm. Could the order be to, if it's not cleaned up within 30 days, then, then the city do it? Well, it will take a while. I mean, it's not, I can't call contract. I mean, that's a good point. I, I can't call contractors tomorrow. You know, it takes, you know, your legal counsel a while to get the paperwork around and get it in court. So. Realistically, you'd be looking at a 30-day timeline. If you were to affirm this tonight, <coughs> we come back at the October meeting. There's about a 50-50 chance I have the title search back yet and have filed the complaint. And even if I file the complaint, you know, we're still in the service process, so there's zero chance that I already have a judgment against her by the time we come to the October meeting. So there is some built-in time there. And, and, uh, 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 Occasionally, we'll, we'll have someone who only responds to litigation, and uh, uh, they address it, and we dismiss the litigation. So there is some, some slack in there for it. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a teardown; it's a clean up. So, mm -hmm. or getting in and tearing down, you're not looking at a building that's coming down. You're looking. Yeah, it's pretty much scooping up and dumping in a truck. Yeah. And it's yeah. Yep. So if the owner does want to come forward. Uh, before we had any expense in it that could be turned around, even even with action taken tonight, you're saying there will be before time. you have, you know, there will be a little bit because I have to order the title search, but there won't there won't be a great deal okay. between now and the next time. I think it's probably enough to get it done. Right. There's still some yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I'm saying that there's been some observation of some type of work there. I think that I give them the opportunity to carry through with it. So we can still carry on and they yeah. still will have to till the next meeting if they have things done. So then I'm making a form of motion just to carry, just to keep things moving here. I'm making the form of motion that we proceed. Second. Yeah. It's been moved by Councilman Garrett to move forward with the condemnation and seconded by Councilman Goodman. Those in favor? And it is unanimous. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Katie. Okay. Well, I am going to close the public hearings for the condemnation issues and open another public hearing for the MSRP grant application and introduce Stephen Ray. Or Harry, which which one We're should I introduce? Right. Introduce oh. Stephen Ray and yeah. Harry Webb. Here. <coughs> this is just a preliminary. Yeah, this is off of Webb's table. Okay. Did you get this off the web? Yeah. <laughs> 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 really bad. That's bad. my one. That was bad. Right. Okay. Yeah. Stephen, would you identify yourself for the record, please? Good evening. I'm Stephen Ray. I'm the executive director of the North Central Indiana Regional Planning Council. We're serving as the grant administrator for the city of Rochester's um, downtown Main Street Revitalization Grant. 
uh, tonight's uh, public hearing is a requirement of the Community Development Block Grant Program. We have to hold two public hearings, one prior to the proposal and one prior to the actual application submission. Um, the Community Development Block Grant Program is a federal program. It's HUD dollars that come back to the state and uh, the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs administers those uh, those dollars in a variety of programs, the Main Street Revitalization being one of them. Um, in order to be eligible for the program, we need a uh, unit of local government, city, county, or town, incorporated town, um, to serve as the lead applicant. And the city has been gracious enough to um, serve in that capacity. And we also need um, the community to have a designated Main Street organization and uh, Rochester's downtown partnership <coughs> serves in that role. Um, the uh, national objective for the project is the prevention or elimination of slum and blight. Um, the city is seeking $600,000 to do facade improvements within the designated downtown district. Um, OCRA sets aside approximately $2 million each year for uh, Main Street revitalization projects. They can fund two to three, maybe four projects a, a year uh, with $2 million. The amount of community development block grant funds that will benefit low to moderate income individuals within the community is estimated to be $266,640. Um, the final budget is yet to be determined. Local match is coming from um, some city resources, uh, Harry Community Foundation, yep, Community, Community Foundation, Foundation. and uh, the building owners. Um, those dollar amounts will be determined at, by the time of the final application. Um, there will be no displacement with this project. The proposals are due next Friday, October 5th. The application, final application, is due November 30th. And the award announcement it will be sometime in mid-January 2019. Um, those are my talking points. At this point, I think we'll turn it over to Harry and let him take you through the project a little bit. Yeah, there is a, a timeline that Stephen has been working off of, and the, we're basically about a fourth of the way into it through the process. Um, but the environmental review is this Friday. We hope to we hope to have the environmental review submitted this Friday. Yes. So what you have, what I printed out for you, there's. Um, I think 17, 18 different buildings involved in this initial phase. These are not, this is um, this is what is going to be turned in for environmental review. Some of these projects, some of these buildings will not be um, uh, um, be part of the project at this point. We don't know yet. These were the ones who initially uh, paid us the $500 and we got the architect involved to, to do a preliminary drawing of the project. Um, we have a, uh, this, is, this um, spreadsheet kind of goes through some of the dollars. The $600,000 is what we're applying for from Okra. The city has paid in the $20,000, which we basically have used for the architect to do this preliminary work. And the, and the application that she's getting ready to submit it for review on Friday. Um, the theater and foundation has put, or the foundation has put in a match was it 20000 $20, dollars is the amount that the community foundation has kicked towards the project um, redevelopment commission uh roughly about a year ago pledged fifteen thousand, and other is still to be determined we would like to be able to raise some funds so the total project funds coming in are six hundred fifty five thousand. um of that the fixed costs are we have we have committed um $120,000 to go to back to the theater. Um, uh, the architect fees for doing the second phase of the project is $90,000. And the grant administrator 
um, Stephen, is his fees are $48,000. And there's also a labor standard and environmental review of $8,000. So our fixed cost coming out of this is two sixty six, dollars which leaves us $389,000 for local match or match from the fund to help building owners improve their buildings. We haven't finalized how that match is going to be distributed, but at this point we're... So I'm, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Harry, what was your soft cost figure again? <clears throat> to what? 266. And I'd be happy to email you uh, this. This is a working document. It changes literally every time we have a conversation because uh, projects are, are scaled differently. Um, and we've, we've created a formula for the building owners that pays 80% of their costs for the first $25,000. So if they did a $25,000 improvement, uh, the grant would provide $20,000 and they would pay five. For the next $25,000, um, they pay 50-50. And so that takes the match of uh, thirty-eight five dollars on a project that costs $50,000. Anything over $50,000, we do not have funds to help. So it'd be all on the building owner. So the, the matching percentage is kind of varied Um, <coughs> this column shows our project cost estimates that we have right now. Um, she still has eight, and this is these are estimates been prepared by the architect. Um, some of these projects have been have been reviewed with the building owners, and projects have been scaled back. There are still seven to eight properties that have not had that review with the architect. So the numbers that are on this page are um, her total cost estimates. Um, and those may be scaled back or projects could possibly be eliminated. But the total project improvements to downtown will be one, if, if everything on this page is done, is $1.2 million. So Harry, if I'm doing my building and it's a $400,000 project, can I piece out part of it that's 50,000 and be, be in the grant? program yeah if you wanted to just do windows as part instance, of the grant uh-huh you could do just windows and decide to do the rest um, on your okay. own or even do another historic preservation grant um, so yeah it, it doesn't have to be if the project comes out you know there's you know there's projects on here that are let's say 98 um, $92,000 um, well there's a For instance, uh, the third one down on here is the brewery site, and um, which is Chris Van Dyne's property, and it's estimated to be $62,000 project. The maximum owner contributed funds was basically obtained in a survey when we when we first asked them how much they could put towards a project. Um, but using that in these these columns here. The owner to do this sixty-two thousand dollars, the owner would have to put in twenty-nine five, and they would get thirty-two five with match, and that's kind of how. And so in his situation, he's about fifty-two percent of his project is okay. grant dollars. Gotcha. And you can see these grant dollars kind of vary based on the obviously the more expensive projects can be twenty twenty percent match, twenty-five percent match, so forth. Um, there's a couple options that could be happen on these real expensive projects. They could either uh, carve out and go after historic preservation money, the same grant that I used to do the drugstore. That program pays up to $100,000 to a building owner on a 25% match. So they can get a $400,000 project to get $100,000. And so because our grants are, our grant is going to be limited at least at this phase, unless a lot of projects fall out, the 32,000, they may decide, you know, I think I'd be better off going after this other grant. 
They could actually do both as well. Um, the historic preservation grant can do roofs <coughs> and other things that the um, this facade enhancement grant cannot do. Yeah, this is, this facade would, grant is simply would Ms. Facade. Jacobs be working with them if they wanted historical preservation grant? She could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but they'd have to contract her separate from correct. What we're, okay. Yeah, she was the architect I used for the project for the drugstore. And she's already done a lot of preliminary work, so she'd have a, you know, pretty good idea of the a leg up, the leg up on that building. So, um, if anybody wants me to email them larger, I mean, this this document that's been printed out, this basically shows before and after descriptions. It's kind of hard to read when you scale a blueprint down to a nine and a half by eleven sheets of paper. Um, but most of the projects involve. Um, these all has to be historic treatments, so it has to be taking it back to the way the building was originally designed, kind of thing, which is important. Um, but it's uh, basically a lot of window replacement, a lot of uh, storefront glass replacement, some new doors, some tuck pointing, uh, brick areas, and that type of thing. Um, repairing the cornices up across the, the top of the buildings and painting those, and that type of project. Uh, some of the building owners are in here today and they uh, maybe can address more about what their specific project um, is going to be. There's also two documents that um, the city will uh, prepare. We have draft copies here that I can give the attorney with your blessing. And um, one of these is an easement. Um, these, are, these are documents that the building owner will have to sign in order to be part of the project. Um, one of them is basically a 10-foot um, easement that basically stipulates that they can't remove these materials after we put them on the grant dollars. So it's a, is it five years? Probably? Yeah. So five years. It's a limited term easement. Five years. There's nothing that pro prohibits a building owner from selling the property after doing this grant. Um, but the, the easement, easement is transferable. Yeah. And then there's also just kind of a, a general memorandum of understanding of, of, of all the, the phases here. Um, and it has... Um, Is there any reporting necessary during this five-year period? Reporting yeah, uh, of the building? To make yeah, notification so that <coughs> nothing has been changed? Verification? Of, of the grant itself, yes, there is. So. I, the grain administrator, will drive by, provide semi-annual updates to the Office of Community and Rural Affairs. They will do a desk review and then occasionally they'll come out and do a spot check to ensure that the buildings are still serving the same purpose and that they funded. And then that goes away after the five year period? Yes. Okay. Um, briefly read this letter of understanding it in the draft form. Um, as a building owner participating in the Rochester MSRP improvement grant project, I understand that my participation requires the following. I provide the city of facade the easement for participation in the building for a period of five years. This easement has been recorded in the office of the Fulton County Recorder. All building facade improvements will be completed in accordance with the Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation of historic buildings. All rehabilitation plans have been approved by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources State Historic Preservation Office. This is the City of Rochester grant funded project. I must not negotiate directly with a contractor. Instead, all negotiations regarding my building must be made through blank. I, don't, I assume that's the contractor's name. Yes. Um, the scope of work for my building is defined in a bid document dated blank. Federal requirements prohibit the addition or deletion of items unless approved by the project architect. Uh, NCIRPC, the city of Rochester, and the owner. If I elect to add or delete an item or items not identified in the bid document, this work must be done following the conclusion of the project or change or, or procedure. In such case, 100% of the cost will be paid by me or refunded to me. I understand that if a collective project funds exist after the conclusion of the project, I may be entitled to a prorated reimbursement. I will participate financially in the rehabilitation work of my building and provide at least 20% of the opinion of probable <coughs> cost. 
our situation is going to be at least 25%. Um, I will deposit 100% of this amount into the city, into an account set up by the city of Rochester for this project by the deadline of 4 p.m. on blank, and that will be sometime in November. That's November. yet to be determined by late October, very early November. If I fail to meet this deadline, my building will be eliminated from the project. The contingency fund of blank will be used as needed by the number of participating building owners. There is no required match. We have told every one of the building owners to set aside some additional funds. Um, if a contingency fund is depleted, I will be responsible for 100% of the cost of any overages approved by the owner related directly to the scope of work as presented in the bid document. Any work not authorized out of the scope of work will be at no cost to the owner. I will deposit the amount of any overage in the city account within 14 days of being advised of additional cost. Following the completion of this project, I will be permitted to blank. And I will be financially responsible for any maintenance, replacement, repair work subsequent to the completion or the rehabilitation in order to maintain the appearance of my building not covered under the defective workmanship or warranty work. And then basically a place for signature. It's Tell going to be the again. city's account. The money will... Well, I understood you said it's the city's account. Yes, the city is paying for this project, but they're using grant dollars mm -hmm. and building owner dollars to do so. I have to have an escrow account set up. Mm -hmm. uh, one contractor will be doing all the work. That's the other question I was going to be because it was your first blank you hit there. Who is this one contractor? Does anybody know right now? Since oh no, yeah, nobody knows. Is it a general? We haven't bid it yet. You know, so once we determine <coughs> that we're at this estimating phase and trying to figure out the scope that everybody wants to be in and their comfort level, how much work they want done, if they're in or out. Once they, say, once they say they're in, we'll know exactly what match we can calculate and um, we'll determine how much they're going to have to put in escrow account. Mm -hmm. That'll all happen before the application happens. Then we go and apply. If Oker comes back and grants the money, then we hire the architect to come back and take these documents to construction documents. And that's when the work begins of preparing, preparing this whole project to a build phase. Then that will be bid by many contractors, hopefully, and we'll select a final contractor to do the work. $1.2 million project, it'll be a significant bid package for sure yeah um, that number could, will probably go down but at this point it's 1.2 mm -hmm. any other questions or go to comments from you comment any comments from the council I'd open it up to the public. Any uh, comments or questions? Who would pick the contractor? Your, the your, or the building your name, please. Tina Brown. The city does, don't they? Oh, isn't that? Yes. That's our <coughs> part of the project management. We yes. have to manage the project. Well, it's but isn't there a matrix? in order when we get the bid documents and review them, isn't there some kind of a matrix for measurements of um, like a scoring system? Right, Similar right. To other this was, is just like any other public improvement project. The city will be responsible for um, placing the bids, receiving them at a stated date and time, and then going through the scrolling process. Bid openings, board of works, you Tip know, all, the, all that, like typically, do a normal project. Typically your architect or your engineer will be there to, to provide you with uh, support as well. <coughs> yes, sir. Your name? Dwight Gunter. Uh, if you've got <coughs> 10 buildings to be redone, are they going to start with one building, finish it completely? Because that would be real difficult to have 
that's a really good question. That'll be a, a conversation for Pat and the contractors. I can't can't respond to that. Well, that's a great question. So you've got ten buildings. Yeah, who's going to be first? I would how, have to think of doing multiple projects at the same time. You know, they'll be using different subs to come in and demo. Other subs to you know, when the masons come in, they're going to be going from one building to the next, but they're going to be. You know, when they're doing windows, that window contractor is going to be going right down the street doing each building. Well, Pat's had experience with this. I would think she'd be able to answer the question, is that part of the bid package? Would they have to lay out some kind of matrix, how they would proceed in, in accomplishing that many tasks? That's, I, I would think that's in the bid package. That'd be my guess. But that's a good question for her since she's been <laughs> through it. Yeah. Certainly a pat Good question. question. Good question. Anybody, anything else? Yes, Wes. Harry, how many, how many projects do you say that people apply for now? And then how, where do you think that would be by the time the application is submitted? I think we're, <coughs> I'd have to do an actual count, but I think we're around 17. Um, but we've still eight building owners that we haven't talked with when we so with the other 11 9 no 10 of them were very favorable of moving forward so we kept thinking during that day when that when the day started out I was hoping we'd have five <laughs> and by the time the day was done we had everybody we talked to seemed to be willing to move forward but there were seven to eight property owners that was not available um, to go through the review so we haven't <coughs> had anybody fall out yet but they there are several that have not completely reviewed it either uh, right along with the question Dwight asked it <coughs> made me think of something else is there a time limit that the construction has to be completed by 18 months a grant 18 months 18 months from a grant award to completion other questions anybody yes Dwight um, the, when I was talking to uh, the architect uh, Pat she made it very clear that um, the structure of the building like the roof did not have any leaks in it that kind of thing and I know three buildings that we're talking about that all have leaking roofs such as the Bailey's building, still doesn't have the roof done. And if they're in that application project, um, in the whole scope of things, at what point do they have to have their roof repaired before they can be in this whole project? I think she was saying <coughs> that that roof would have to be completed before they could apply for this. So they better be doing it. has for this other than to have the public meeting lit up for questions uh, nothing to uh, <laughs> vote on. we've already nothing. voted on <laughs> being the, uh, the champion for the program I have Correct? some signatures on some documents that I need so if you want to close and then go over the documents that would be fine I have yet I would love to see something as our as part of our part of our process and development is as our scope of responsibility. Like these issues that come up, is that the city that then becomes the negotiator to make sure these issues get ironed out? Are we do we become okra? Is that how it how it would work? Your grant administrator and your architect will walk the city through any issues, work with you 
to resolve any issues that you may have that may come up during the implementation process. Ultimately, the city is responsible for the uh, appropriate imp implementation of the grant and successful implementation. That's why you have a certified grant administrator, me or whomever, and the architect will ensure that uh, that the construction portion of the, of the projects a success as well. Okay. But certainly, yeah, I can I can get you the bullet points, talking points, and then we can sit and have a conversation and answer any questions you may have. Okay. <clears throat> any questions from the legal side, Andy? I don't. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah move to uh, close the public meeting. Anybody want to move to do that? Yep. Those in favor? It's unanimous. The public meeting <coughs> is now closed. Thank you. Okay. Documents, ma'am. Would you like them now or should I take a seat and come back later? Oh, I, I was going to say one of them, you might want to explain the one uh, about the application Authorization? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because that um, council approval. So these documents are required for the proposal submission. That is uh, authorizing the submission of the proposal. The proposal is a, a placeholder application. It gets our foot in the door and allows us to submit the final application in November. If we fail to meet the requirements at the proposal stage, um, we're dead in the water come November. that Jennifer Santos in my office will be submitting the environmental review on your behalf and she can discuss issues with Jennifer. <laughs> Should anything. What well, problems come back with the environmental review? Uh, if, if you fail to meet the historic requirements, they will tell you to do plastic windows or uh, window treatments, those types of things. Basically what we do is we submit the packet, that, that packet right there, along with some additional information to SHPO and six other agencies. Let them know what type of work we're doing and what we hope to accomplish. And they sign off on it. That's proving me to transfer out the public hearing then. And the final document, thank you for being patient with me, is a four-factor analysis is the language access plan. If you had a um, percentage of population, for argument's sakes, that um, was Hispanic, um, we would need to put together an access plan to ensure that they have access to uh, the information and that uh, English has a second language as in English. <coughs> Rochester does not a significant population with, uh, yeah, with English as a second language. You just gave up your house too. Yeah, I did. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you, Harry. Moving along to new business, trick-or-treat hours. Recommendation by the Board of Public Works and Safety uh, is that uh, we again have trick-or-treating on uh, Halloween, October the 31st, and Rick, the Board of Works is recommending the same hours as last year, 5.30 to 7.30. That's what it's been for as long as I can remember. That's, so, that's <laughs> Halloween, isn't it? We need a motion yeah. to... Do. Do we need a motion to... Would you, uh, would you like to extend that to midnight? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fine with me. Around the way. I have a motion. I'll have a motion to... Oh, second. Okay. It's moved by Councilman Garrett, seconded by Goodman. Those in favor signify and it's unanimous, same as last year. Okay. And we have Mr. Dwight Gunner this evening. And Dwight, would you like to step up? Um, and Dwight, I need to apologize to you. You, The Board of Works really wasn't the place for, for your meeting. Uh, the process, Casey's gone, isn't she? No, she's back there. Okay, okay. The process is our ordinance for the uh, historical corridor, if you all remember, states that Casey is the, uh, is the office that everything's funneled through involving the corridor. But if there's something she believes needs some other scrutiny or approval, it would come to this body for the ordinance set up, like the fellow that had the garage downtown and then also the Bailey building. Office. So that puts you on the docket, Dwight. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you all know, I own the uh, dugout. And what I would like to do is be able to uh, changed the building to uh, ADA accessible and uh, basically the uh, easiest and most uh, beneficial way for all parties be included would be to uh, change the facade entry to the north side and put a um, elevated ramp from the south going north to that north door uh, I need to rise eight inches uh, elevation uh, because the sidewalk and the inside floor, the inside floor is eight inches higher than right up the sidewalk. So it eliminates the step. That way it makes it easy for anybody that comes into town, wants to go to a bar, they can park out front. I'll have a space for handicap and they can come right in the front door. So that's basically it in a nutshell. And his drawings were in your packet. In your email. In your email, yes. <laughs> I can go motion. run copies if you like. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, well, you uh, before we do that, I'd like to earlier. Casey, do you know if, <coughs> if, if anything historic with the building that would, if the ramp would be there covering up that step or anything? Uh, nothing? No, I mean, Mike's going to refinish the facade. And, and honestly, okay. I apologize. Why I didn't even think about it when we were talking about it as far as the historic corridor. I was just thinking about the fact that the city owned the right of way, which is why I referred him to the Board of Works. And But he's actually restoring the out the facade of the building back to historical nature. I mean, that's part of the plan. So, I mean, yeah, the ramp is not historical, but it's a necessity. So, I don't, I obviously don't mm -hmm. do Stephen Ray's job. I don't know about the grant process, but as far as the availability for the public to use it, I think it's a great thing. And the ramp is included in the project that will be reviewed by the historic it's going down there Friday. You know, the ramp is part of the project. So, so what does that do, Harry? What they're just going to, I mean, they will be reviewing the whole thing. So if they had a problem with it, I guess they would tell us. I don't think it's going to have any effect at all. They would have a lot of problems if they pointed the finger yes, in that direction. Mm -hmm. Of something, a problem with an ADA, except making a building ADA accessible in town. They would have right. a tremendous amount of problems. They might have right. the, it's like we talked at the Board of Works and the reason that it should come
come here is not the ADA issue, the design, uh, modernistic, or should it look like it conforms to the historical building or, or what? I'm pretty flexible. You're pretty flexible. Oh, I, you can do about anything. Yeah. I would just put that in the owner's hands, and I'm sure that Dwight and in, in his <laughs> capabilities will be just fine in handling it in the proper method. <laughs> I'd entertain some. Oh, so the pictures look good. Oh, yeah. So yeah. a movement by Goodman to accept your design proposal. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Second by Miller. Those in favor? 7 0. Go for it. Thank you. Um, 5 0. Five. Oh, I'm sorry, 5 0. Be sure and tell them down there that we've approved it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, budget ordinance, does everybody have a copy? Okay, I would entertain a motion uh, for the reading of Ordinance 05-2018-2019 Budget Ordinance. Motion for the first reading. By title only, so moved. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty slick. Uh, <laughs> There's a motion to read Ordinance 5-2018 by title only by Goodman, seconded by Garrett. Those in favor? Okay, 5-0. Ordinance of Resolution for Appropriations and Tax Rates, Ordinance Number 05-2018. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, I'd entertain uh, a motion the second reading of ordinance 5-2018 by title only. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by uh, Mason, seconded by Brian. Those in favor? 5-0. You're on, sir. Ordinance of resolution for appropriations and tax rates, ordinance number 05-2018. Any, any discussions? Then I would ask to suspend the rules and have the third reading of ordinance 05-2018 by title only. So moved. Second. Those in favor? It's 5-0. Okay, sir. Ordinance resolution for appropriations and tax rates, ordinance number 05-2018. Okay. Any discussion? Ask for a motion to accept ordinance 5-2018. Motion is made by uh, Heidi, seconded by Goodman. Those in favor, and that is. Sorry. No, that's okay. That's 5 0. 5 2018 <coughs> passes. Shot as a stick. Okay, you want us to sign? Yes, please sign that one. Okay, moving right along, then we'll and go down the to uh, department heads reports. Uh, Chief Butler is out of town. Uh, anybody from the fire department okay chief shots this is a red letter day we will tell chief butler that you got to go first tonight. that's right uh, good evening for the month of August we had a total of 23 accidents two of those were personal injury uh, we issued a total of 65 warnings uh, 61 were for traffic and four were for city ordinances. There were a total of 115 offenses, with 46 being traffic, 63 criminal, three juvenile, and three city ordinances. 71 total case reports, 844 calls for service, 34 lockouts, 
12 towed vehicles. They're consistent, if nothing else. Yeah. 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 And 32 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes that those people were lodged for by our officers for the month of August. Any uh, questions for Chief Shots? Other than that, we do have the uh, chili cook-off and car show coming up next month, so uh, we'll be blocking off the roads and downtown for that. And you did have uh, the swearing-in of your new officer. We did, yep. He's doing well. We're He's full staff, well. and hopefully we'll stay that way. It's it's very nice for a change. What is the car show? The car show is the 19th. Chili Cook-Off and Car Show is the 19th? 13th. 13th, 13th thank you. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> it's on a Saturday. I guarantee it's on a Saturday. It's on In Saturday. October. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> good job. <laughs> yeah. you got four Saturdays there where you have to block to pick one off just hey, to hit it right. Just pick yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else for the chief? Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Appreciate it as usual. Okay, uh, Stormwater Projects, Randy Williams and General Projects. The uh, Fourth Street Project, the storm sewers are in on Ohio. They're uh, putting in the corner drains and they're getting ready to start grading for the sidewalks. The LED lighting through the city, the crew's done changing out street lights. Uh, they're going to go back, though. We'll run another reconciliation between the, what we pay and what lights were done to make sure that everything's been caught up, that they balanced out. Then uh, 7th and Madison Street parking lot, we've got the drain in. Uh, they'll be coming in first the next month to pave it. And then we're also getting quotes to have it striped. And then today we the generator was load tested today and now it's online for City Hall. So it'll it'll run its own um, test on Monday mornings at four. It'll do a it'll run under load for fifteen minutes. So I shouldn't be in here using my computer at four o'clock. Oh it won't hurt. It'll just glitch. All right. Uh, we should probably mention the Four Street project finally are off Ohio Street and ready to uh, to take uh, Four Street on. Now we've run into some issues uh, with Duke. Uh, Duke has to. Uh, their critical analysis report for the project showed that they would have to hold some poles and do some things of that nature as the construction was being done. Well, there are 40 Duke trucks down in the Carolinas right now. So we're kind of at their mercy right now a bit as to when we can get those folks to come up and, uh, and do that. So we're trying to work, work with them and uh, do as much as we can without having Duke on site. So there could be some stopping and starting going on. But we'll we'll know more in the next couple days. Right. Any questions for Randy? <coughs> Thanks Randy. Lots Thanks. going on. Thank you. Okay, uh, Lenny, Street Department in the park. Good evening. Good evening. Out the uh, street department, we've been sweeping the streets, doing some cleanup on the north side of the wastewater treatment plant with the loader, um, been picking up bags of yard debris, cleaning up around the uh, Rochester sign and the entrance to the city park on West 12th Street. Um, we got all the leaf machines ready for the upcoming leaf season. Uh, been chipping brush, trimming back various locations and alleys and around signs. Um, we took down the Psy Iota Psy banners <laughs> and put up the uh, 
black top cruisers, red hot chili cook off ones today. Um, still working on placing and replacing missing and st faded street signs. And um, that's all I have for the street department. Any questions on that? I actually have one. Do you have the corner of Fifth and Fulton? Faded one? Yeah, I, I believe it's Fitz and Fulton. It, yeah, can't it's faded. It at all. Yeah, I it should be coming in. Okay. I ordered some. I just noticed that the other day. I meant to ask you. That. I know you will. And, and I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry Shada, but you just reminded me of this for Randy. You have two spots that we need to check as to uh, whether Duke owns the lights that were in question, right? The, oh, yeah. The two, there's one on uh, Boulevard Street at the intersection of Boulevard and Poets. And then there's the one beside the, um, yep, mm -hmm, pavilion on the golf course across from Faith Outreach. Excuse us, Lenny. Mm -hmm. This light project's been interesting. There have been like three different light companies in the last 50 years. So the first issue was, what's the inventory? <laughs> so, and then Duke's been finding some things they didn't <coughs> realize as they went through this process. So there could be one or two lights out there that they haven't had on their inventory list that uh, <laughs> missed. So we're going through and you do this at night, find the old incandescent light that's still burning. In some instances, people have purchased their own light. <coughs> so all that has to be sorted through. And I'm and there will be a separate project for lighting downtown. So that's, we're into that right now. Sorry, Lenny. No, you're fine. Um, out the park, we've been mowing grass. Um, we eat it and cut brush along the lake by the beach and dam. And uh, I got that on the schedule for spring. Um, replenished the mulch in Manitow Mountain where it was low in high traffic areas been cleaning the restrooms and checking them before they quit. Cleaned up the pavilion across from the B&K. Put new parking blocks on the south side of the dam. Trimmed trees and low-line limbs at the city park. And that's about all I have for that. Yeah, we should, should mention that uh, Wes will have an ad in the paper here soon for us. We're uh, advertising for a garden, <coughs> gardener service to uh, garden our uh, half a dozen or so gardens in town plus our 33 pots. Yes, so, someone who knows weeds from flowers. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, Want to get something regular established there that uh, we can count on. Any, Any questions for Lenny? Thank you, sir. Yeah, Appreciate it. Good to report. Marcus is not here this evening. Derek, would you like to come up? Good evening. Good evening, Derek. <clears throat> For the month of August, um, the water department did the following duties. <coughs> Excuse me. Red meters, did orders, repair to replace bad meters, locates, backwash the filter beds, did shutoffs, mowed multiple times, hauled in more fill dirt for the new concrete pad at the lower shed, Replumbed in a water line to go outside for our for the new outside spigot now that our new entry door was installed. Fixed a leak on the four inch water main at East 6th Street and Ohio Street. This was a bell joint leaking. Removed the stone from the hole in front of the Times Theater so it could be concreted back. I do know that's finished. Repaired the outside pit at 1408 Audubon. Lowered the valve box at 1537 Briar Lane. Cleaned out the dump truck. Actually cleaned it up as well. Located and cleaned out the curb stop at 1530 Jefferson Street and made sure we could get on it and operate it. LG Concrete was pouring a new driveway there. So we wanted to make sure we didn't have to do anything after they concreted it. Uh, we assisted Bill Walsh in removing some more old softener piping in the old plant and it has been replaced with new plastic tubing. Um, so now all our softener valves on the new side and the old side are all, they're all brand new valves. All the old lines have been removed and now they're all new lines with them. And um, I'll skip the next line since I repeated myself, but we did do that multiple times. <laughs> Rewired and changed the lights on the mower trailer. And then digs that were performed, we replaced the curb stop at 922 Fulton Avenue that was leaking. 
Same thing at 1223 Franklin Street that was leaking. And then uh, we did a 10 inch and a six inch valve insertion at 4th and Indiana Avenue. And then we also did a did two four inch valve insertions at 4th and Ohio Street and then 5th and Ohio Street. Um, the one at 5th and Ohio was on the hydrant and the one at 4th and Ohio was on the main. And then call outs, Randy Wynn was called out on the third to the Little League Diamond for a water leak. Um, the water was shut off for repairs and I do believe those repairs have been made and it's back on. Other than that, that's all I got. Anything else? Gary? Should be mentioned that uh, the Ohio Street project, all the infrastructure is completed as we mentioned. And I wish Greg Loving were still here because the valve insertions that we've done and we did what? Four or five? while we were going through this process. Yeah, we did two, three, four, five, yeah. Are all a process of uh, upgrading the water main uh, system that was over there will also benefit the foundry because there's now some safeguards in that would uh, uh, guarantee that if we had some issue, uh, the foundry would not be affected. So that was all good stuff that came about as as a process of having the ground open over there. It was an arduous process, but it's now complete. And the next step for the Ohio Street folks will be the paving and sidewalk going in over there. And that should happen very quickly. That will be done before any of the other project carries on. So they'll be put back to normal very soon. Here. And I'll also get with ENB too, because I want to make sure that they can at least paved back on Indiana Avenue where the two valves were inserted, at yeah. least out of the way of when they come across Indiana Avenue. Well, I want to publicly thank you for yeah. your close work with those people over there during this, this project. Too close. <laughs> well, you kept our best interest in heart. We Absolutely. We appreciate that. You and Randy both. Thank you. And then do, you, do we want to give an update on the Monroe Street project too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there were some issues on the Monroe Street project on uh, some of the sidewalk and ramps weren't up to code. So amongst us in the city and working with Casey, they got that those issues resolved. All the concrete is done. They passed their pre-inspections and their post-inspections. So right now all that's scheduled is to come back and add more fill dirt in some of the locations that uh, Chris from HWC, our inspector, um, found and then also put the dirt back around where they re poured concrete and then the project will be complete and then and, uh, e and b is scheduled for october the 8th yep. to come in and uh, redo that street to pave it and that'll also be the around the same time they'll do the parking lot up at 7th street finish that up. right that's right that'll be it that's all i got thank you sir thank you Casey, thank you for your efforts over there. No, I know that was not a fun time either. Thank you. <coughs> okay, uh, reports of uh, committees. Uh, Rochester Downtown Partnership, we've heard from Harry. You don't have anything else to say? Actually, do you? I do. <laughs> okay, I think we'll start with the water board. <laughs> thank you. Okay, Harry, what do you got? <laughs> Are you feeling the love here? Yeah, I am feeling the love. <laughs> <laughs> this is just relation, a, but, uh, I just want to give you an terrible. update on the design committee met with yeah. um, street finding, street wayfinding signs. We, we met with a um, firm that does this and has done it for Man North Manchester. And, um, Thank you. Um, City of Logansport, um, Fort Wayne, and wayfinding signage are basically what you see in communities that are relatively large signs and they can be of various sizes, you usually have some form of logo on them and then they do things like say city pool this way, golf course, downtown, historic downtown, and uh, you position them throughout your community. This isn't just a downtown thing. Um, you persist and it, it can point out city parking lots, it can point out um, library, uh, community school, that type of thing. Um, and it gives a constant theme throughout the community. And it's something we've been talking about doing for a long time. And there is a, there is a grant that we can apply for. And our, our, our um, uh, 
that could go we could get up to ten thousand um, dollars it's a five to ten thousand dollar grant um, it's called a DEG downtown enhancement grant and it requires a match of one and a half times so if you if you applied for 10 you would have to put 15 in so you could do a $25,000 project for $15,000 of the local match um, 5,000 of that can be 50 cents for every dollar can be um, in kind so if we get uh, for instance ENB paving to put in the um, pedestals for the signage for instance because it has to meet all in dot standards and all that kind of stuff then that portion can be an in-kind contribution and and help with our help with our whole match process so we just did a preliminary uh, meeting with this gentleman and it was a very he, he's very qualified company um, and he's just presented us with a proposal <coughs> and um, and I just wanted to share this information I'm not asking at this point but I'm just trying to decide if this is something you want us to keep moving forward on um, and if so, you know, this $5,680 $5, is his, he described a, a wayfinding signage project as a four phase process. And this is for the first two phases of it for, you know, first phase is develop what, where you want them, what you want, you know, what are you trying to identify and where you want the signage to be and what you want it to look like. And that's kind of what this would do would be, um, and then the, the, the second two phases is is building the signs and installation of those signs. Well, oh, I just read what the fifty-six hundred dollars is about. You don't get a sign for that. No, you get a, what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good gig. Yeah. Well, Come in and yeah. Uh, yeah, tell us where we're going to put our signs and what they're going to look like. Any clue what the total project would be? Um, yeah. we were yeah. we were shooting a number you know the city of Logan Sport did like $150,000 in signage but it's a much bigger town uh, probably somewhere between twenty five and fifty thousand dollars if we you know there again once we decide each one of these signs is about four or five grand they're not cheap they have to have like four foot of concrete base and it has to have a break off pedestal so if a car hits it it snaps it off and um, but it I has to also make us a sign a lot cheaper Dwight <laughs> and that is certainly a possibility. Uh -huh. Yeah, but uh -huh. but yeah, this uh, we're just trying to go down the process right now and figure okay. out where what we want to do. And then, you know, if this is something you want to pursue, if if you wanted us to bring this gentleman in and make a presentation, if you wanted us to talk to others and get another estimate. Um, just kind of wanting some guidance or if you just wants to ixnay it and uh, but I, I was hoping that um, maybe maybe the this project could be something that could be pulled from seeded in some future year or you know some other funding source personally I think wayfinding signage looks nice like it helps make it downtown especially I know it's for everywhere else but makes it downtown feel like a downtown and when you go through those other cities that have it they stand out to me because it's something that we don't have that virtually every city around us has yeah the Logan Sports is very nice yeah very nice it should be these guys did it so that's an example of their work I mean this is um, the, the city the whole city of Fort Wayne is done by these people yeah. I mean that's for real and they're based none, out of Fort Wayne us, so they're all us need the signage we know where everything is but right. as we try to draw more people downtown with beautifying it, enhancing it, you know, bike trail coming in, if we have people coming in from different towns on bikes, it would be nice to show them where other stuff is. Well, yeah, where the school is. Softball like parks, the, the school, hospital. The pool. Yeah, pool. Try softball to find park. that pool. Golf yeah. course, you know, stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try to find our pool, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. If you're not from, from here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's softball parks. Yeah. 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 There's somebody yeah. come in and take right. it easy to find. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Question. One thing and they have big signs and they have little signs. So like, like if you're doing the pool and you're wanting to get just one thing, I'm sorry, one okay. thing, you can just do a little version of it that just says pool, but it still has the same common theme 
less less money. That's not the five thousand dollar sign, but that's the probably the two thousand dollar sign. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I was going to say is is uh, the only recommendation I would have because you were asking as far as getting additional quotes or proposals or thoughts on cost. If the city is going to contribute financially in any fashion, Absolutely. State Board of Accounts will require that, especially at that price point. So I would say if you can locate other companies, if the council it wishes for you to move forward, I would definitely make sure that you... Uh, for the design phase or for the whole thing? Everything. I guess... I guess it, it, yeah, the whole project. project. No different mm -hmm. than a truck. Mm -hmm. Right. But then do we need a competitive quote on on the on design, the design phase. and looking at that number yes okay that's out for everything mm -hmm. and if Logan Sport didn't do that I'd be real surprised mm -hmm. have to mm -hmm. yeah, and a minimum of three is uh, what they prefer so it's a, but if there's not three companies of the same caliber and you can only locate two, then it just needs to be documented. We got a question. Hmm? Okay. Who regulates what goes on there? We just we would make that decision. The city so would decide where where we wanted to put the signs. You know, we're going to like identify the ten most affordable spots. You know, we may and it could be a phased thing. You could do five signs and then a year later do five more. Well, my yep. question, my next question was going to be if a business wants on there. I would not be, this would not be okay, for commercial use. Asking. This would be, yeah, Just basically, like, like, what yeah, this would be for public amenities. The parks, the pool, the golf course, uh, library, library. Softball, baseball. Yeah. I thought, you know, Mason was saying that everybody knows where everything is, but I'm relatively new when I first came here. And not that hard to find things, but where is the high school? Where is the baseball field? Where is the football field? So if someone coming into town, not knowing anything, be able to see whatever. Well, and it's an advertisement for your community because it's letting them know. Oh, I didn't know they had a pool. You know, or I didn't know they. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see anyway, she's, I see she's left, but Casey would have to be involved in all this too. Yeah, and in dot. In dot. Yeah. yeah. And these guys are, you know, that's what they, that's what they, they do. do. Uh, would they come in and make a proposal or give a presentation? Maybe. Yeah, maybe we ought to get a couple more estimates, and then we, then they can come have, in and have folks come in and show us pictures. And, does that sound like a winner? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, definitely. We want to see what they're doing first. Yeah. Yep. So is that a consensus to move forward for hearing? Yes, I just yeah I don't want to spend a lot of time developing it if it's not something that you guys want us to do so I mean this is evidently you know mostly we could raise some money for this but most of these dollars are going to come from the city mm -hmm. I mean it's basically city amenities so yeah. I, I think we're everybody in agreement that we probably the next thing would be to have somebody come and show us you know what they're talking about maybe are there three people you can are there two other people you can contact I don't know you know I think we just basically called Manchester and asked them where their signs came from they gave okay. us these people and we contacted these folks out of Fort Wayne so um, they might be able to tell us if there's some of their competitors yeah, and ask about the grant situation too That's the grant you know the grant is you know subject to okra but the 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 DEG grant, he, Stephen Ray just texted me. It's it's only five to ten thousand dollars, and you have to do for every dollar of grant money, you have to spend a dollar and a half. So if you get ten thousand dollars, you have to spend fifteen. Five of that can be in kind. So um, okay, so, so it's going to pay roughly half. Half, of it. yeah. And RDP can be the. I was just going to say, you know, being 501c3, people can right? donate money and or yeah. whatever. And, you know, we might be able to get some foundation dollars, or yeah, there's there's all there's options out there for it. But RDP might not be because it goes beyond the scope of the downtown. Well, you're going to get coming in from interested in town. Yeah, we talked about that. It is outside our scope, being the whole town, but it it points basically to town. So okay. signage is something we can help with, and it is part of the whole consistent theme that RDP's running anyway. So 
that's just you know I, I, what I look at this is what's going to follow MSRP. So if we just get the downtown done, then just but it takes so long to get these things rolling. I mean, this, we're talking a year or two before it's going to happen. So, yeah. and if we know if we can work it with into our budget cycle, for instance, if, if we know by um, May or June that come 2020, this is something that we want to make sure we include. So when the council starts reviewing budgets, I start sending those out in May, gathering them back by June, and then we meet in July to review everything. So optimally, would be great to have anything that might want to be spent out in 2020 included in that discussion ahead of time versus doing an additional appropriation. Just a suggestion. Yeah, it's, it's something for you guys to ponder. So, all right, thanks. Thank you, Harry. Okay, uh, Karen, Area Plan Commission. Yes, we met last evening at 7 p.m. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we met and discussed uh, the fee schedule. We have some, I guess, some tweaks that kind of need to be made in a few areas of our fee schedules. And the main discussion was on our on the solar arrays that are being brought within the county and also the CAFO schedules for that uh, impact the inspection of uh, I guess Fulton County has mostly uh, pits for retention of waste. Uh, retention ponds? Yes, retention yeah. ponds. For drainage? Yes, CAFO, yes. And so uh, we discussed that, and so uh, there's going to be some more look, looking into that, and Casey's going to work on that. We're going to bring it up at the next meeting then on what we've decided on to schedule the fees for those of changing them. Also, on um, pertaining to industrial and commercial sites, the landscaping uh, fees and items that are required for the uh, surrounding of the buildings on industrial and commercial sites, uh, we will be working on that one also. It was just discuss discussion last evening, and the meeting was closed. Ended in closed. Very good. <laughs> you make a note that your next meeting, on if, if the subject is still retention ponds, it has become apparent that there's no ordinance, city, county, drainage board, anything regarding maintenance of retention ponds. That was discussed. Okay. Last evening Very also. good. Yes. Then it's it's hit that. Radar. Yes, we we are. Yes, that's in the discussion. Okay. With within the uh, uh, codes. So yes. It doesn't do you any a, good to have a retention pond if it's all grown up with yes. yeah, stuff. Okay. Most definitely. Great. <laughs> any any other questions for Karen? Okay, thank you. Man, that was a great report. Thank we never hear you. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness, because I didn't know a lot about those retention ponds. <laughs> <laughs> FEDCO. <clears throat> okay, FEDCO did meet on the sixth, um, reported a checking account balance of nineteen one fifty six eighteen. Operating reserve 725.90.96. Um, still, we have open board seats to fill. Um, there's a ballot being prepared, but we do have four members that are either in their ninth or tenth year. Terry was going to reach out and see if they wanted to continue on the board, um, and then we'll be then we'll have our vote. The business incubator is still in the process. Uh, Chris is still working to close a deal on 501 Main Street. Um, Tippecanoe Brews approached um, inquiring about the USDA loan funds. We we're waiting on their application. Um, Frank Boley is still Frank Boley. He's <laughs> too much going on in um, Peoria, so he might possibly be um, joining forces with someone locally <coughs> to be a project manager for him. <coughs> Um, we received more site requests. Uh, another Pulaski County business is looking for a 20 to 25,000 square foot um, facility. Uh, the company out of North Carolina, Taylor Chemical, is interested in Dean Foods. We have not heard anything else from them, but uh, they were told that the building wasn't for sale, so I guess they're, they're most likely looking elsewhere. Um, Terry received a call from Todd Rikita looking for some space, um, so he's looking at a couple buildings in the area. 
Uh, we were awarded a new USDA grant in July. It closed in August. Um, the Cook Building and the Chicken Coop both sold the week prior to our meeting. Um, Elliot Hazen bought the old Cook Building and the Chicken Coop Building sold to Ed Jenkins. And there will be a career fair held October 3rd at the fairgrounds. Um, the RDP Economic Vitality Committee is working on a business retention and expansion plan for downtown. Um, Schnabeltier has begun their, uh, they are now brewing beer. Uh, they do not have a release date yet. And then finally, I got a text from Terry. Um, he spoke with Mike Kuiper from Nickel Plate, um, who it's, he spoke to the governor today, and the governor wants us to build a, a lot more trails, including between Rochester and Monterey. On the old abandoned railroad line, um, says money will not be a problem. Any other questions? That's my report. Oh, so he's found a windfall. Hmm. It is just a text, so okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That doesn't match the email that I read today, but we'll see. When did you, when did you get the email? Uh, this afternoon. I just got the text before the meeting. Okay. Go, with, go with the trail before oh. fi finishing 31. <laughs> go, I have a governor, go for another vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in your perspective, John. It's all in your perspective. <laughs> Mark Borey, Mason. All right, we met on the 10th, and other than what? Planner reported we didn't really have much um, the pool filters that Lori ordered. She had sent off the filters to the company that were going to custom make them because they're so old. She got them in and they don't fit. So she's sending those back and we're back to square one on that. Um, and the golf course, our air fryer has been out of commission. Um, something we do twice a year. Wild is looking at purchasing new, contracting it out whatever, he ended up finding a used one. Um, it was actually a good match for us, and so we're back in business, and he got those verified probably this week. So. Any questions for Mason? Well, I'd like to mention for the record that our associate park board member, Grace Dakey, mm -hmm. was homecoming queen this past Friday. Congratulations to Gracie. You're here. here. <laughs> okay, the BZA and Council on Aging. Marty is not here. Uh, Solid Waste Animal Adoption Center. Chase is not here. Freeboard and EMS. Council in Fitzwater. Freeboard did meet September 6th. Uh, the main topics were that they're uh, the contracts are off for the, the cutting and the trimming of trees. And so that process is going on as far as we know. Person with, the company with the contract is going to be getting to it. Uh, we're look, looking at replacing trees are coming down, uh, pending the budget. So maybe talk with Shada at some point to see what's still what's available after the uh, bills come in for the removals. Uh, or for the uh, keep the tree city status, we have to replace, not just cut things down. And I just, we're, uh, so that was a September 6th meeting. We're supposed to have met on the 20th to talk more about the you know, additional trees coming down and, and planting. But I believe one member was out of town on vacation. Another one may have gotten called to, down to uh, North Carolina for the hurricane relief. So, yeah. No meeting. He couldn't be there. Yeah. So, two, two out of four is not a quorum. So. Uh, and I did want to follow up on something else. I just received an email earlier this week or last week for a resident wanting to know if a tree, one of these trees is supposed to be coming down. I said, yeah, it's Mark, but nothing's happening. So I forwarded it to Ms. Zenger. She got right back with him. And he said, yeah, thanks to the board for getting so back, back with him so promptly. He said, I just mainly want to know why I need to move my cars out of the way. So he wasn't so much upset that it wasn't down. He just wanted to make sure that and it's clear. They, well, his, yeah. his cars weren't there, so sure. they had to get in and do the work. So, sure. uh, so that's at least on to pass that feedback on. Oh, it's good to hear something good rather than <laughs> it fell on my car or something. Hey, Brian. Yes, sir. Hey, can you, uh, on 1304, 
between 1304 and 1308, I think it was Madison. Um, there's, there's one that's bad. I mean, it's split down the middle. And it's, it's all hollowed out the bottom. Okay. I think uh, I talked to, um, oh, I think I'm Leon the third. Oh, Jim, Jim Mulligan. Jim Mulligan. Mm -hmm. And he went down and he, he verified it. Yeah, it needs to come down. And, uh, okay. I had, the, I had the property on me. I think it was a 1308 call me today. Uh, concerned about it. Um, okay. And Randy has another one, a guy on Ohio, uh, lives at Fifth in Ohio, who's got one. <coughs> it's, it's dead and it keeps losing its limbs. That's also probably a uh, one that's in jeopardy. Okay. Fine. All right. I'll let him know. All right. Thank you, sir. Today. And that's all I have for the board. Okay. EMS. No meeting yet. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. Any questions for Councilman Fitzwater? I should. Uh, note that part of our mayor's walk, if you've been keeping track of, of our walks, uh, it's very apparent that we need a lot of sidewalk work in our city. And very soon now we'll be bringing an ordinance forward to uh, reestablish, uh, put some monies aside to reestablish our CUME fund for a sidewalk program, a matching program of some sort. We're still working the numbers on that, but uh, we've got to get started with something like that. Uh, we're doing lots of things to beautify Rochester, and, but we can't forget about off the main drag. Our sidewalks are in terrible shape. And there are a lot of bricks still out there serving as sidewalks. I'm not telling you anything, am I, Councilman Garrett? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I've walked them all. Be prepared. We'll we'll be looking at that very soon. And there are some areas that have no sidewalks at all. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. It's time to get into the twenty-first <coughs> century. Right. Yes. You want to get in the twenty-first century? Climb on. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going. For time, a ride. time to work on those things. Yep. Okay. Uh, John Waterboard. Yes, Waterboard, Matt, and. Uh, Derek uh, gave quotes on the replacement of a skid loader uh, for the 2019 budget, and they tabled that uh, for the further discussion for the October meeting. And they also had a quote from uh, Ford, Lincoln, Mercury for a uh, to replace the uh, 2013 pickup truck with a new utility truck at a price of twenty thousand five hundred sixty-one dollars. They are going to accept Ford's quote because. Uh, we did not receive any other quotes from the other two car uh, vehicle companies in town or anyone else. So uh, that was one we had, and it was a very respectable price. So we went with it. Uh, Marvin made the motion to approve the 60 cent raise for hourly employees and superintendent's wage of 54 to 90. Um, and Derek came up with a thing that was pretty cool, and as you were there, Mr. Mayor, so you know it too, and he did a very good job on it. He's coming up with a 20-year schedule of forecast maintenance project improvement for the city of Rochester, and uh, it's the first time anybody's done that, and it is going to work good. Uh, everybody was pretty impressed, and, it, and it, it's just going to be a good thing for the city and the water department, knowing what to look forward to and what could go wrong. And it was very nice, and he, he came up with this, and uh, I think it was appreciated by everybody. And then uh, the painting project, the water plant is completed, except for a few touch-ups. And uh, that was really about everything that they had on the on the agenda for that for that meeting. There was nobody taking a vacation this month. No, no, <laughs> so, no. So we were all kind of wondering about that, but other than that, everything other than that, everything was normal. Well, you know, and it was. You thought you were going to get away without hearing it, didn't you? <laughs> it was amazing, John. Didn't you think it was amazing that all that got done? And there was no vacation dates. So and no vacation here, Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't hardly understand really, it. But. It really gets a lot done. But now yeah, that, uh, but that forecast of 20-year uh, plan, it, it's, it, it not only includes his departmental uh, concerns and, and issues to, uh, to look at, but it also includes, like Monroe Street Project, our infrastructure situations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are others out there that we need to get on some kind of uh, schedule that we're looking at and 
moving forward to take care of before it hits us hard with some failure. So, and the Monroe Street's a perfect example, handled that very well. But he's putting that all together also. So, no, it was a good meeting. Yes, very good meeting. Any questions for Council and Gary? Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Um, 88 concerns, we have none. Actually, Are, Ted, actually, um, you do? Yes. Concern? Okay. Not here. Well, not a concern, <laughs> but it just came up today. Um, just to let everybody know that there, we will be replacing the corners at the intersection of 8th and Main Street on the north side. So the curb ramps, the entire, all, both of those approaches, if you walk down that area, you'll see we there's a lot of cracks. Um, we've a lot had of spider work going but, on. Right. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> Lenny did bring in uh, Michigan <coughs> contractors to double check the street, the um, traffic sig sign or traffic signal post. <laughs> Get that out. Foundation. Foundations to make sure they were okay, and he felt like they were perfectly fine. It's just that the way that those were poured was a little different than the ones to the north. Mm -hmm. So that area was spidering worse. Um, so we're getting getting those started here pretty soon and should be done before the chili cook-off, correct? That's our plan. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then also... Weather permitting. I'm sorry? Weather permitting. Weather permitting. So, that, so we will be getting those, at least get a start on those two corners and then, again, working it into the budget to make sure that we can continue on with some of those other intersections and corners. The other area is going to be the corner of 7th and Madison. We've got uh, some side work, sidewalk work that's going to be going on there for ADA compliance. So some of this stuff has been on our ADA transition plan. Uh, some of you will remember from 2012, there are areas that have been marked. So we're just going to keep trucking along, look, chipping it away a little bit at a time and getting our uh, ADA compliancy ongoing. Yeah, it was it was kind of humorous. I had a call from uh, a lady uh, who was concerned with our ADA ramps over on Monroe Street. Why in the world do they have to be so rampy, so much of an angle? And there is these older folks that we have trouble walking down. The I said, we don't control that. That's federal and has to be a certain grade and angle. That's well, all part of it. I say, well, it depends on where it's at on Monroe because if it's an older section, it probably wouldn't meet current code. No, but she, if it's new she was section, talking about the new port. The new port. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It has to, yeah, it's okay. A, yeah. Slope is eight point one. No. And grades two percent. No. I mean, yeah, there's federal codes there. We have to right. follow. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? ADA or that covers no, it. Unless anybody has received any concerns. Um, anything from our legal department? Okay. You ought to bring a book to read or something. <laughs> I actually sit here and do more work for you while you're doing Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate Answer. that. I appreciate that. Okay. Without, any other, without any other issues, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make motions made by Goodman, seconded by Heidi, those in favor signified by. And okay, we're adjourned. Thank you. No.